run, run. I think, whoa, <laughs> I'm starting to feel claustrophobic. How difficult is it to make a VR game for the Meta Quest 3, specifically inside Horizon Worlds? What I had in mind is basically something similar to this, where you're swinging through the trees or you're jumping over rocks. These kind of videos are very popular with children. They stand in front of the TV and they do the same thing. They pretend that they're the ones playing even some adults for exercise. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if you could do that in VR? So you're actually grabbing onto the rope. So this is how the game looks right now. Extremely basic, not much here. We have my score, little white box, little red box, and then the rope. The idea is that the player would stand here and then in time with the music, swing. Oh, I hit something in the real world. Swing, 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 and your score would increase. Now, of course, in the final game, it would look like you're running through trees, right? So it'd be a lot more exciting and the rope would appear and disappear. But for now, this is just for testing. And if I go in my red box, it resets my score. Again, that's just for testing. If we go into the world creation, this is what it looks like. This is how you make a game in Meta Horizon Worlds. So that was my player. That was the score, the little white box, little red box, and then our rope. That green box around the rope is called a trigger. And that's how I detect when a player is touching the rope. And then that actually fires off this script here, which says when trigger is entered by player, send increase score to game. Now, what I did is I actually created a game object where I'm going to put all my logic or all my functions into one place. So you can see I have an increase score, reset score. Okay, so where do we start here? I decided to just do an animation of a bunch of trees moving so I can get an idea of how it looks if you're standing there. Now, obviously, this is very shaky, but I just wanted to see, does it feel like I'm actually moving forwards? And the answer is no. Um, and I think we could say for a couple of reasons. Well, firstly, those things at the back, if I'm moving forward, they should actually be getting bigger, right? And same with these trees. If I was moving forwards, as they're coming towards me, they should increase in size. They should scale up. Uh, there's another problem as well. You see my controller on the right here. It says over capacity. And if we look at this over here, you can see geometric complexity 143%. The reason for that is basically we have so many trees. Look at this. Now, this isn't the way I would do it anyway. What I would actually do is something like... Uh, can we get rid of these for a moment? They're really distracting. Let's get rid of these. So the way that I would actually do it is I would have like one tree, two tree, three tree, four tree, maybe something like that. And then same on the other side. And then what I would do is I would have them move forwards. And then once they get past the player, I would have the script actually move them all the way to the back. And then actually you just have four trees that are rotating, even though it looks like there's a lot of trees. Okay, so we're back in our world editor and you can see that the trees are moving smoothly from one end to the other. And once I hit this trigger down here, they get sent all the way to the back. So watch this tree, it gets sent to the back. Watch this tree, sent to the back. And that's how we have an endless supply of trees, even though we actually only have six objects or six trees. So if we go down to the ground, this is how it looks. Now, obviously, we've only got trees on this side. We also need them on this side. There's my rope you can see it still triggers um, the other thing is right now they're only moving what i said earlier is i also want them to scale so i want them to get bigger as they get closer to me i'm not 100 percent happy with this either because the way i've done it is i've got this script here which is attached to each tree so it says move the tree by this much over one second then do it again 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 and obviously our trigger down here is the one that sends it back to the starting point one Okay, time for another update. You can see it looks pretty much the same, except we have trees on both sides. And if I go down, you can imagine swing, swing, swing it through the trees. Now, obviously, right now, the trees are only moving. They're not actually scaling, which is something we need. And there's nothing at the end to make it, you know, try and trick us into thinking we're moving. So not perfect yet, but you can kind of get the idea. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is we removed our trigger and we removed our trigger script. So we've actually simplified this whole thing by having an end block. And then over here, we have a start block. So what I've done in the script is to actually, let's get this out of the way. So every time this loop runs, it's moving the tree, right? So we know that part from earlier. 
but what we've also done is put in an if statement so if the z position of the tree goes beyond the z position of our end block which is our red block it knows to send it all the way to the back by getting the z position of the start block so if i was to move those blocks around I could actually adjust the way that the trees start and end without having to input any kind of numbers or coordinates up here. And because we're getting the X and Y from the tree itself, it doesn't matter if the tree is on the left or the right, because all we're adjusting is the Z position to send it all the way back there. So I'm happy with that. It's a lot simpler, which also means it's a lot easier to read. So if you went away from this for a month, came back, you could say, oh, okay, so you've got a movement script here. It moves the trees, it sends them back. It does everything all in one script. Very simple. Now, I also made it scale them, but it didn't work out so well for me. And I'll show you why. Um, scale two over, oh, scale two or scale by? We'll do scale by over time. Uh, we're going to scale it by, oh, where's my keyboard? This is one of the things I don't like about Horizon Worlds, is that sometimes trying to build your game is like playing a game, with your keyboard going missing, or with these items over here refusing to go in the right place, or just annoying things like this. So you see this if statement is smaller than or equal to. You would think that if you wanted to do bigger than or equal to, you could just drag that there, right? No, it wipes out the whole thing and makes you do it again. So what I found you have to do is duplicate this one, then put the new one below and then drag them over. It's just, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, uh, we're gonna scale itself by, let's say 1.1.1. So where's our keyboard? We have to go hunting for it. There must be a way to fix this. Maybe I'm being silly, but 1.1. And then we go to the next box, my keyboard disappears again. I don't know, it's very frustrating, um, but I'm just gonna get through it to show you because this is probably gonna be the last part of the video for today because I have no idea if people are actually going to be interested in this. So I don't wanna spend too long shooting a video that maybe nobody wants to watch. Okay, so if we run our server, what you'll see is that as the trees come closer, they get bigger. Now, of course, at the moment, there's nothing to stop them. So they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But just to see how it looks, let's restart it and go down to the ground. Run, run. I think, whoa, <laughs> I'm starting to feel claustrophobic. Okay, I think uh, obviously our scaling is too much. So let's try and reduce that down to like maybe 0, 1.01. .01. Okay, so let's try that going to reset go down to the ground oh why am I over here okay run oh I need to be more forward run run running through the trees now if this was going faster I feel like this could actually work this could fool you into thinking you're moving forwards um, should we try and do that before I end the video maybe I should right could be interesting if we can make it look a little bit better so we're going to move the tree let's say every 0.5 I knock oh, every 0.5 of a second my goodness this is frustrating it's not always this bad sometimes it plays much nicer and then we're also going to change all of these to oh my gosh why am I under the world so let's restart the script and then go down to our world. Run, run. Okay, yeah, it's kind of getting there. Obviously at the moment we have this problem where they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so what I thought to fix that actually is that when it goes back to this position, once it goes back to its first position, we would change its scale. Um, set object, where's set object scale? Is it here? scale two so what I did is I I put another block here come on okay let's move it <clears throat> I put another block here that says scale self to one 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 which you'd think is its original scale point right but if you do that watch what happens oh, don't tell me it's working now maybe it's working now Let's test by making our scale more extreme. Why is my keyboard hiding? Where are you now? 
So I paused the video for a minute and I've made it scale much larger, but it should reset itself once it goes home. So let's play it. And no, you can see they're just getting bigger and bigger. Oh wait, let me check. Oh, it is working. Kind of. That's weird. When it gets here, it is making them back to their original scale. But when they get here... Oh no, it is working. It's working. Okay, I think that's enough for today. We've got the trees moving. We've got them scaling. That part is working. I'll have to mess around with the times to try and make it feel more realistic but I guess I shouldn't focus too much on that because there's a lot of other game elements that I should be working on like being able to grab the rope, the timing of the rope appearing and disappearing plus I want to have rocks that you jump over and I don't want the player to press jump on their controller I want them to actually physically jump in the real world which means we have to track the position of the player and then if it increases the vertical within a certain time period we know they jumped. Um, like I said, I have no idea if anyone's going to be interested in this video. I might make a shorter video when I finish this, where it's just like a two minute overview and then the finished game, because I think a lot more people will be interested in that than the technical side of things. So that's it, Meta Quest 3 trying to make a game on Horizon Worlds. Thanks for watching.